Today we're diving into one of the most shocking but rare medical stories ever recorded. This is where a life-saving organ transplant ended up transmitting deadly cancer cells to the recipients. It was multiple recipients, and I'm gonna let you know what happened to those recipients and what is this story all about? How can that happen? Let's get into it. It is no surprise that people are on waiting lists for organ transplants all over the world. Some people, many people, get them, but a lot of people die while they are on the transplant list for a heart, for a kidney, for lungs, liver. So listen, imagine getting a heart transplant, which is one of the most profound medical miracles that can be performed today, only to be told later that the organ you received carried cancer cells, and then you ended up with cancer. That's exactly what happened in a remarkable series of events involving at least four transplant recipients. Some survived, others didn't. This happened in 2007 from a lady who was 53 years old in Europe. When she passed away from a stroke, the following organs were taken from her or harvested from her and donated into the recipients who were waiting desperately for an organ. It was both her kidneys, her liver, her lungs, and her heart. So here's what happened and why would all of them then get cancer from her donation? Here are the human outcomes from her donation. The lung recipient developed breast cancer, breast cancer from breast cancer donor cells 16 months later, and she passed away. The liver recipient developed aggressive cancer four years later and passed away. The left kidney recipient also developed cancer six years later and passed away. And the right kidney recipient was a 32-year-old male but what this cancer was caught early. He had the transplanted kidney removed where he was able to stop the immunosuppressant medication and he underwent cancer treatment and he survived and he was cancer free at the last follow up. And the heart recipient, what happened to that person? Unfortunately, he died shortly after the transplant. He died from sepsis, not cancer. So how does this happen? Well, first of all, I just wanted to say it sounds kind of odd, like if it's um, a a lung that was transplanted, why were breast cancer cells found there? Well, because if you have breast cancer and it metastasizes to other parts of the body, there's a metastasis to other parts of the body, those areas that now have cancer are cancer from the original site, which was breast. It isn't a new cancer of lung cancer, it is the metastasized cancer from the breast tissue. This is just too far out. How, how did they match this? How did they find out that these recipients developed cancer that were breast cancer cells from this donor? Well, all of this is not done willy-nilly. It's a very rigorous process for living donors as well as deceased donors. When all of the donor testing is done, imaging is done, labs are done, it is a really rigorous process. And microscopic cancer cells were from this lady who passed away and was the donor. Her microscopic cancer cells that were not detected then went into all of these recipients. DNA sequencing directly matched this donor to these recipients. It was a genetic match to the genetic profile of the donor. The million dollar question, how could this happen? Really, why was the donor cleared? The donor had the rigorous testing done, but the cancer was hidden and microscopic. Standard pre-donation screening can miss occult imaging, occult malignancies. Occult means hidden, tiny tumors or cells that don't show up on standard imaging or tests. These rogue cancer cells were transferred into the recipient's from this 53-year-old lady. All of these recipients then had to be on immunosuppressant medication. And when that happened, it made a good opportunity for these cancer cells to flourish. So what's the takeaway? Although this is extremely rare, think about it. Would you give up an organ transplant knowing that there's a extremely low chance of something like tiny rogue microscopic cancer cells possibly being transferred into you or a loved one? Would you pass up that heart donation or that kidney for this rare possibility. Some people would, but most people would not. 
So what is the percentage? What kind of low risk are we talking about? The risk of transmitting tumors is between 0.01% and 0.05% for each organ transplant. The advantages of receiving an organ, especially for those who are very, very ill and have been waiting a long time, usually really outweighs this tiny small risk for the majority of people. It is rare, it is unique, it is really interesting how cells behave. And even though after all treatment is done, this is what we're talking about when we think about sometimes there are some microscopic cancer cells that are left behind and often that is not always sometimes why after say radiation chemotherapy uh, surgery that initial treatment is done and sometimes the oncologist might say we're doing five more rounds of chemo well a lot of people don't understand the benefit of that and think why would i put myself through five more rounds i'll do one more well it's because the data is showing that there are microscopic possible cancer cells and it's safely helping you get to the highest possible state of remission for the longest period of time for the highest success rate Although rare but serious, nothing is perfect, including organ donation screening, recipient screening, nothing is perfect. Even with medication and other treatments that are available to all of us, there is always a possibility of something going wrong. Would you take that risk? I know for me, I would, but that is not for everybody. This isn't just a fluke, it really was proven, it was proven by science, because each one of the tumors in these recipients were genetically sequenced, as I mentioned before, and traced back to the original donor. Remember, this story does not undermine the importance and critical need for organ donation, but rather it teaches us about the complexity and ongoing medical challenges in modern medicine today. If you found this fascinating, please consider doing this. It is free. It helps the channel immensely, not just mine, but everybody else's. That's why we're always saying it. Otherwise, like I've said before, all of our 100, 200, 300 thousands of videos just sit around in the basement somewhere, our basement, and never get seen. So hit the thumbs up. Please like and subscribe, share with somebody that you think might find this fascinating. I'll see you at the next video.